She received the Fulbright Scholarship to go for six months to the States, so unfortunately she can't be here with us today. And she asked me to present her research, so I hope I'll do it well. So I may not be able to answer all of your questions, but I'll do my best. So what we're looking at is really um, how the rare earth element, with most species, strong skin, grows from the soil into the plants and the stream waters, and how we can use that actually to um, as a baseline for migration studies. So very often, we, we see these baseline of biologically available strontium around, and they're using different methods. We either plants, or we use uh, small mammals, or uh, soil leaches, or stream waters, and there's still not really a consensus on what's the best media to actually uh, do this. I mean, I personally do not like using small mammals, modern, because I think it's unethical, and uh, archaeological, because they are, you need to find them, and they're very difficult to find. So even though they are the archaeological uh, small mammals are probably the best. They are not always possible to use for a large scale mapping and, and uh, high density sampling. So here we focus on soil, plants, and stream waters. So what we're doing deep is comparing uh, the different sample media to look uh, at the strontium isotopes and the various elements as well in the um, in the different medias and to see what's the impact uh, of the geology or the superficial sediments on these isotopes and rare earth elements. Are they influenced more by the bedrock or by the superficial sediments? These are the different things we're looking at. And so if you're familiar, if you're familiar with strontium, you probably know this already, but if you're not, the strontium basically gets released into the bedrock by weathering at different rates depending on which rocks we're talking about and then it goes into the soil and that's taken up by the plants and the plants are at the base of the food chain that's what we eat or the animals eat the plants and we eat the animals so at the end of the day what we actually the strontium we have in our body comes from the plants but is it the same as in the soil is it the same as in the stream waters around so that was the question we had here and so we've got already a, a few maps out there using different methods um, so it's usually low density sampling, uh, and, but um, um, and so that's why we, we want to, to look a bit more into what's the best way to, to do high density sampling, to not do useless work by by following the, by using the wrong media. So the study site is County Meath in, in uh, Ireland. So we have a high density sampling in that area, and uh, it's a very varied geochemical region, so there's a lot of different uh, geological units in that region, and uh, that's why we, we thought it was interesting to, to look at that area. And so if you look here, uh, you've got County Me surrounded by, by the black line there, and all the dots represent one sample. So all the dots represent one plant sample, and then on four sides, which are the star sides, we also have soil and um, stream water, which we compare then later on. So we've got quite a high density there, trying to sample all the different geologies. I mean, you may see that this light blue area is not very sampled here, but we've sampled here, here, and here. So we still have quite a good sampling density for that, uh, which is that, um, I think it's the limestone that's, that's down there. And so what we see, if we compare, uh, if we look at the isotope results for each of these uh, bedrock formations, we actually see that, yes, we have lower strontium values these two formations and higher for these ones, they are statistically uh, different. And so, on the one hand, the bedrock has an impact on the strontium isotope ratio uh, that you measure in, in your plants. So, the bedrock is influential, but does that remove the impact of sufficient uh, formations? And here is, is the same map again, the same sampling, but here we show uh, the sufficient geology. And if we compare the results, once again, we've got differences between the different uh, uh, geological uh, units. And so not only has the bedrock an impact, but also the superficial geology, which is kind of to be expected. I mean, there's a combination of what's coming from the bedrock and what's on top of it that has an impact. But this clearly shows, again, that using a geological map so, or geological strontium isotope ratio to create a map of the biologically available strontium is not the way to go forward. There's too much difference between bedrock between uh, superficial geology and then also with the plants. So if we now look at the variation between sample media, so we've got vegetation, 
And now we've got two soy lean shapes, one with water and one with uh, almond nitrate, and then we've got stream water. And if we look for um, limestone, it's quite nice. We have more or less the same results throughout the different uh, sample media. But if we look at, for example, uh, the basalt here, the two different leachate method gives us completely different results. And then the stream water is not, is not in agreement with, with the vegetation. And here, this one here, the leachates are all right, they're in phase with the plants, but the stream water is not. When we talk about stream water, sometimes they are in phase, sometimes they're not. And that's because the water can come from much further up, taking all the strontium from other uh, formations before getting to the formation we are, where we are sampling it. So from this, we, we, we think that uh, stream water is not um, a suitable uh, media for biologically available strontium. Not only that, but the concentration of strontium in water is much lower than the concentration in plants. So even if the people were drinking huge amounts of water, they would need to drink quite a lot of water just to compensate uh, the amount of strontium taken in by, uh, by, by the, the vegetation, the food. And, at, and then in parallel, we have the soy leaches in here. Whilst the two sounds we have results that are OK, for two others, they completely not following the, the the plant values. And in the end, the plants are what we eat. So from this, for us, the plants are, are, are the sample media to use to, to create these maps of biologically available strontium. And so this study was uh, published um, for, for uh, France, if I remember correctly. And so these are the difference between soil leaches, strontium isotope ratio, and the plant strontium isotope ratio. And I agree, there's a very strong correlation. Yes, the soil will be somehow linked to the, to the plant. And in, as we see in our, in our results, two cases it's all right, but two cases it's not. And here you actually see there are a lot of cases where it plots out. So in many cases, if we just focus on the soil, we may actually miss some of the biologically available information that's in, in the landscape. So once again, even though there is, and it's normal, that plants growing on granite will have different strontium isotope ratio than plants growing on limestone, we do have this problem with soil that sometimes they just don't reflect what's going into the plant. Turning to the rare earth elements, so we're trying to investigate the transfer and fractionation of these REs in soil, plants, and stream water. Most of the studies have focused on China and Australia, and there are kind of contradictory. It's not always uh, easy to, to get a lot of information out of them. And we've analyzed all 15 REs, and we're trying to, to get out some information out of the data. Certainly, we, they're very difficult to interpret, so it's, it's very difficult to look at. We have very different patterns from one, element, from one media to the other, and overall, basically, with the amount of analysis we've done so far, we're still looking more into depth into the, the, those results. We haven't been able to find any trend between stream water, uh, soil, and plants. So we're still looking into that. But at the moment, it, it's not very clear what we can do with them. But we had only four sites where we compared the, the different medias and we did rare earth elements. So more work has to be done. But with this, at present, we, we, we are at a dead end. I don't want to say dead end, but we need more work on this, clearly. So basically, uh, what we're trying to show you here is that uh, tools can be combined um, to investigate geochemical contribution at different scale. With the rare earth elements, unfortunately, with uh, our study here, we were unable to find clear pattern between the different media. But when we look at the strontium isotopes, and that's, I think, the message I would like you to take home, is that uh, on the local scale, it depends not only on the bedrock, but also on the sufficient geology. And when we look at which media to use to create those maps for migration studies in archaeological context, well, plants, in our case, uh, represent the best uh, media for these kind of studies. Thank you very much.